There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do and I go wild. Car 54, where are you? Vice President, Hugo Adenucci. <laughs> Re-elected as Recording Secretary, Joe Steinmetz. <laughs> Elected as your new Treasurer, Gunther Tootie. <laughs> Are you kidding? Tootie, Treasurer! <laughs> order, order. Gunther's your new Treasurer. We got over $800 in the Treasury. We gonna let him handle it? You gotta be kidding! Order, order, order. Gunther Tootie, according to our bylaws, the club treasury amounting to $836 is hereby turned over to you. Who, the first thing in the morning, will put it back in the bank? That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the bank. Well well done. Done. Well, fellow members, I'm perfectly thrilled at being elected your new treasurer. But. I wouldn't be honest if I said that I was happy about the lousy way you guys are taking it. You know we love you, but you're not the guy to be handling money like that. Oh, yeah? Give me one reason why I won't make a good treasurer. You can't count. Besides that. Meeting's adjourned. Wait up, Gunther. I'll drive you home. Imagine $836 in his hands. It's frightening. Now, stop brooding. The boys are a little nervous about their money, that's all. I'll make them eat their words. Before I'm through, they're going to say I'm the best treasurer that the Brotherhood Club ever had. Now, Gunther, I've been your partner long enough to know what's going through your mind. If you're thinking of being a hero and pulling all that money out of the bank and doing some big financial deal... Financial deal? Never even entered my mind. Good, because that money is for that summer camp on Lake Ronkonkoma we're going to build someday for the poor kids of our precinct. That's why, if anything ever happened to it... Francis? What? My brother-in-law, he told me about some uranium stock. Now, you listen to me. If anything ever happens to that money, for the rest of your life, you're going to be seeing the accusing eyes of those poor kids of our precinct who have to spend the summer in a hot city instead of a summer camp. Francis, I want you to make me a promise. What's that? If I do anything with this money but put it in the bank, I want you to punch me right in the nose. I'll do just that. First thing in the morning, in the bank. Officer Tootie. Yes? Have I been looking to run into you for months? This is for you. A wristwatch for me? Don't you remember me? Foster, think Foster. I had that cigar store. We caught you taking bets on horses. We had a padlock here. But we were just doing our duty. Are you kidding? That was the biggest favor any man ever did for me. I closed that joint, sold it for 800 bucks, and went into the stock market. Stock market? Look at that. 40 grand. $40,000. I've taken it all out of the bank, and I'm buying... Peruvian tin plate. It's a two bucks a share. It ought to go to 100. 100? No, I'm sorry. This money goes to the bank. Okay, it's your life. I suppose we have to have poor people, too. See ya. Thousand? Two thousand? Officer Tony. Yes? Don't you remember me? I'm Tony. I come around and... Police station, shiny shoes. Oh yeah, Tony Shoe Shine. I haven't seen you around. <laughs> I give up for the shoe shine. Now I'm in the stock market. The stock market? That's right. I started with eight hundred dollars. Va 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 boom. Va 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 boom. Yeah. Hey, look, officer. You and the rest of the boys are always very nice to me. Buy Pratt Plastics. Is it good? Is it good? I'm putting everything in myself. Today, it's 50 cents a share. Next week, it's gonna be $50. Gee, 
gee. Fifty cents a share. How much shares do I get for eight hundred dollars? And if it goes up to fifty dollars, how many thousands do we make? Well, Harris, right. I can't count. Thanks. Do you wish to make a deposit? Are you kidding? I never saw anything like it. Right out on the sidewalk, one policeman punching another policeman in the nose. You let a screwball loose with our hard-earned money. The stock market. He wants to gamble our $836 in the stock market. Gamble? It's showing faith in our country's progress. That's what it is. <laughs> We're just following the footsteps of great men who bet on the future of America. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Fink Foster, Tony Schuster. <laughs> the chair will entertain a motion to investigate, select, and buy stocks with our available funds. Do I hear a motion? I move that we have our treasurer's head examined. <laughs> Besides, that comes on the new business. Muldoon, talk to him. Gunther, for the last time, put, put it, it in the bank. bank. Put it in the bank. Everybody's cleaning up, and we got $836 laying there doing nothing. You know, maybe he's got something there. I got a cousin too dumb to come in out of the rain. He played the stock market, now he's got an apartment on Park Avenue. Now listen. I know Tootie's enthusiasm. Don't get sucked in. It's like a disease. You're out of order. Besides, you're not even on a committee. Look, everybody's making money on the stock market these days. Why should we be the only slobs left out in the cold? Yeah. I say we take the money and put it in a stock market. I say if we do that, we'll be the first investors to lose every cent in the first half hour. Well, what makes it so sure? Because Tootie thought of it. That's the confidence I have in this man. You're right. Order! Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, raise your hands. Opposed? Chicken. Motion is carried. Now, what was the name of that stock that Fink Foster and Tony Shushine gave us an inside tip on? Peruvian tin plate and Pratt plastics. That's it. Come on, let's go and buy it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you guys. Okay, you guys voted to buy stock. Do it in the right way. Get some good advice. I have a cousin, Kevin, who works down at Wall Street for some investment counselors. Let me take you down there. Are you kidding? Fink Foster, Tony Shuside told us that the stock is going to skyrocket. And that was yesterday. Every minute we spend here is probably costing us thousands of dollars. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm pleading with you guys for your own good. Let me take you down to those investment counselors. Their office is downtown. Clark, 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 and Hershkowitz. Clark, 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 and Hershkowitz. Listening to that name just cost us $200. Come on, let's go. Fink Foster. What happened? I was arrested for panhandling. What happened to Peruvian tin plate? That's the market. <laughs> we'll put it all in prep plastics. Come on. Shine them up. Shine them up. Tony Shushine. What happened? I answer the stock market. Sometimes, blah, 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 boo. This is time, boo, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> There's only one stock for you, International Sulphur. International Sulphur. Is it safe? Officer Tootie, International Sulphur is one of the cornerstones of our nation's economy. If it goes, the country goes. Sounds kind of risky. Oh, brother, the boy plunger of Wall Street. Come on, make up your mind. You're wasting Mr. Clark's time. How much is a share? $412 a share. Here. We'll take two shares. I'll write your confirmation. Did I do right, Francis? Of course. Of course, you're not going to get rich quick, but at least you'll be able to sleep nights. Gunther, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Francis, I'm scared. Scared? I was the one who talked to boys in the buying of that stock. Yesterday, I had over $800 in my hand. Today, all I have is a piece of paper. Gunther, that piece of paper says we own two shares of international sulfur. It's as good as gold. You heard what Mr. Clark said. So what? 
We didn't even know which Mr. Clark we were talking to. Clark, 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 Clark. Gunther. Maybe it was a Clark that wasn't even with the firm. Maybe it was some guy who just slipped into the office when there was nobody there. He took our money, and he's off to Mexico by now. Gunther, don't be ridiculous. At least if we talk to Heiskowitz, we'd know where we were. There's only one of him. Gunther, you're in a panic. They're perfectly legitimate brokers. I told you, my cousin Kevin works for them. All right, now that it's out, I might as well tell you. Your cousin Kevin always looked a little sneaky to me. Gunther, you're hysterical. I can't help it, Francis. Here I haven't been treasurer two days, and instead of $836, all we own is two shares of something called International Sofa. Who knows if there even is such a thing? Ooh, ooh. Where's your phone book? Over there. Gunther, it's a giant corporation. It has a triple A rating. They have plants all over the world. The only thing I'm sure it has is our $824. <laughs> That's a load off my mind. What? At least they got a telephone. <laughs> of course they've got a telephone. Oh, no. Now what? It just says the International Sofa Building. They don't have a street address down. I don't like it. It sounds phony. Gunther. Well, how come they didn't put an address down? I'm in a phone book, too. It just doesn't say the Gunther Tootie Building. Gunther. Francis, we should have checked first. We should have put the money in the bank. Now, you listen to me. We've invested our money in the safest stock on the market. How do you know? How do I know? Well, for one thing, I mentioned it to Captain Block this afternoon. And you know what? Captain Block himself owns four shares of International Sulphur. He does? Captain Block owns four shares of it? That's right. Now, will you go home and get some sleep? Oh, why did you tell me that before? That's all I right. Bob. Good night. Good night. <laughs> now what? Francis. I just remembered, Captain Black bet on Nixon. Gunther. He was the first one in the front to buy an Edsel. Gunther. He's still a member of six pyramid clubs. Oh, brother, will you go home and get some sleep? I'll never sleep again. Not until I see with my own eyes there's such a thing as international sulfur. Good night. Good night. Satisfied? I still don't know. You still don't know? Maybe this is all a big front. They got our $824. We can come back here tomorrow. There's a family of gypsies living in a lobby. Well, I've come along with you about as far as I intend to. Okay, you can stay here. I'm going up and see the president. The president? C.F. Cartwright? I don't care what name he's using now. Listen, Francis, if I could just look into his eyes, in one minute, I could tell if the whole thing is already up and up. You're going to go up there and look in his eyes. Gunther, C.F. Cartwright is one of the industrial leaders of the country. You can't waste his time. He's got conferences. He's got meetings. He's also got our $824. Floor, please. Uh, Mr. Cartwright's office. That's the 45th floor. Say this, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, is everything all right with him? With Mr. Cartwright? Yeah. I wouldn't know, officer. I never see him. You see, he has his own private elevator. Oh, he sort of keeps his comings and goings secret, huh? <laughs> In other words, if he sort of wants to pack up and leave, let us say, for Mexico, nobody would know about it, huh? Two policemen, and they want to see me? Yes, sir, a short one and a tall one. They insist on seeing you. They say it's private. Private? I think you'd better see them, sir. The short one is practically going through the books in the outer office. All right, show them in. My chauffeur is probably double parked again. Will you please step this way, officers? Mr. Cartwright is in here. Ah, uh, Mr. Wayne. I'll be right with you. I'll have to see you, gentlemen. Mr. Cartwright is busy. Oh, I have all the papers drawn up. Well, come in, come in. <laughs> well, what is it, officers? How's business? Business? Fine, 
Fine. Do you own this building, or is this a sublet? A sublet? Uh, Mr. Cartwright, let me explain to you about my partner. Can you? Uh, you see, Mr. Cartwright, Gunther. That's his name, Gunther Tootie. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. Mr. Cartwright? Yes? You got nice eyes. Let's go. Wait. Is that what you came up to tell me? Mr. Cartwright, I'd better explain. This may sound silly to you, but Gunther is the treasurer of the 53rd Precinct Brotherhood Club, and he's invested his entire treasury in your company. Yeah. We own two shares. Two shares? Yeah. I bet you thought we were just a couple of ordinary cops when we first came in here. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright has more important things to think about than our two shares. Come on. Wait. When a bunch of hard-working cops invest everything they've got in my company, nothing can be more important. It took us two years to raise that $824. You see, that's money we've saved up towards buying a little summer camp on Lake Ronkonkoma for the poor kids of our precinct. A summer camp for poor kids. A bunch of cops, underpaid, risking their lives every day, still have time to think of poor kids. Tell me more about it. We'd like to, Mr. Cartwright, but we're on our lunch hour. Uh, come on, come Here, let me show you to the door. A summer camp for poor kids. I'm going to help you with that camp. Just give me a little time. <laughs> J.J., hold that bond issue on international sulfur. Don't panic, I'll explain later. Five hundred shares, international sulfur. Wait. Well, what? Cartwright's in trouble. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, okay, might as well play it safe. Cancel that order of international sofa. Wait. Better sell a thousand shares of it. Never know. How about that? Tootie's only been in office three days, and we already got back twice the interest on our money. Not only that, you can never tell about sofa. It's liable to catch on a skyrocket. Boys, <laughs> let's give a cheer to the best treasurer our Brotherhood Club ever had. Oh, come on. Hip, hip, Did I tell you? Did I tell you? What is it? What is it? <laughs> Headlines, that's what it is. International sofa drops 20 points. Well, let me see that. Well, let me see that. Wall Street was stunned when, for no apparent reason, International Sulphur, for the first time in 10 years, dropped 20 points. 20 points? 20 points. That means we lost how much? <laughs> Look who I'm asking. <laughs> Experts remain baffled. Why one of the world's most financially solid institutions should suddenly dip 20 points is today's number one mystery. Mystery? There's no mystery. The answer is clear. Tootie bought it. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. If you bought shares in a telephone company, the country would go back to smoke signals. <laughs> quiet, quiet, quiet. Now, let's not panic. Gunther bought you the safest stock on the market, International Sulphur. Sulphur. I could have told you it was a dud. I could have told you. My wife spends every cent I make. She buys everything. But in all the years we've been married, not one ounce of International Sulphur. I tell you, boys, if my wife didn't buy it, it means it's not made. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's look at the bright side of things. We got something we never had before. A tax loss. <laughs> quiet, quiet, quiet. All right, what are we going to do? I know what we're going to do. I was never wrong about a man's eyes. I'm going up and see Mr. Cartwright. 
I'll go with you. You go with us. I'll go with you. It'll probably be back to normal by the time the market closes today. What is it? The police are here. The same two? Yes, but there are more of them. They all came back. Show them in. Mr. Cartwright, isn't there something you want to tell me? Tell you? Yes, don't keep them waiting. Yes, sir. I'll get them out of the outer office. Hello. I haven't the biggest idea what caused the dip. Oh. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Boys, I'm glad you're here. I assure you, boys, the company has never been in better shape. We trust you, Mr. Cartwright. They trust me. <laughs> you men are now part of the company. I want you to know what you are a part of so you won't worry about these slight fluctuations. Here, study these sales figures. Here's our quarterly report, our production schedules, and here are the plans for the new factories going up. And here's the official history of the company. I want you all to have a copy. Sorry to have troubled you, Wayne. No trouble at all. Did you get those figures? The company's never been stronger in its history. Better get the word out to start buying before it goes back up. Oh, sell. They just took the company's book. Sell, sell, sell. We're ruined. We're ruined. Bet on the future of our country, huh? We certainly did. Hey, you couldn't put it in the bank. You had to be a big time operator with our money. Yes, Good sir. Idea. What a bunch of scary cats. You heard what Mr. Cartwright said. It's just one of those trends. Trend? Look at this paper. International sulfur slips. International sulfur slides. International sulfur dips. Slips, slides, and dips. That ain't a stock. That's a new dance. All right. All right. What are we going to do? Well, Mr. Tootie, what's the decision? Let's go see Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> But there's no explanation for it. All I can tell you men is that I'll guarantee that you won't lose a penny. Did you hear that, boys? Yeah. Mr. Cartwright? Yes? You're going to miss your plane. My plane? Plane? Are you going someplace? I got to be in Washington. The Secretary of the Treasury is holding an investigation. Believe me, we'll find out the source of these mysterious rumors. Oh, I'll never catch that plane with all that traffic to Idlewild. We'll get you out of plane. Wallace, get his bag. I'll get your hat and coat. Call all plant managers and tell them to tighten up. I don't know what. Just tighten up. And I want you to get a hold of personnel and get me a full list. Contact headquarters on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too late. They got the old man. <laughs> That's right. Me and the boys sure appreciate it that we're the first ones you called when you came back from Washington. The Senate investigators found out the source of all the rumors. No, I can't tell you what they were, but I have a check here for $1,500. $1,500? Yes. No matter what International Sulphur is selling at right now, I want to buy your two shares back. For $1,500? We'll be right over. No, no. Don't come here. I'll have it sent over. Gosh, Mr. Cartwright. Wait. I have a personal message from the Secretary of the Treasury to you. A personal message from the Secretary of the Treasury? What did he say? Put it in the bank. Bunch of cops raising money for a summer camp for poor kids. Give me that money back, I just deposited. Oh. Oh.
There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships to an idle wild. Car 54, where are you? 